Hi guys, welcome back to the RC Story. My name's Zamo. In this video, we're gonna be checking out our brand new beast, the Mojave 6S. <laughs> you guys probably thought it was a 4S and there's a perfectly good reason why we've got a 6S. I'll quickly go through the reasoning behind why we didn't go for the brand new 4S. So me and Uman were looking at a void that needed filling part of our armor collection we needed a desert truck we were looking at the new 4s it hasn't been released in the uk yet however by the time this video probably rolls out it probably just been released i know it's available in the states and other parts of the world now the issue with the 4s mojave was that the chassis is shared with some of the other vehicles in the 4s range from armor and the problem they've had is we've seen um close friends of ours We've created some 4S's, etc. And they've jumped them or bashed them and the chassis snapped. They've struggled to replace that chassis. Now, you may be able to get it in other parts of the world. In the UK, they're a nightmare to get hold of. And when they come into stock at retailers, they get sold out pretty much straight away. So we didn't want that problem where we bought a vehicle and it's sitting dormant on the shelf. All our vehicles, if they break, we like to fix them straight away so we can go out and have some more fun. At the end of the day, having all these RCs, and, and if you're not smiling and you're not having fun, what's the point? So we then thought about it, and we thought if we bought a 4S, we'd end up probably going 6S with it anyway. It's a shorter chassis, we understand that. But if it's going to have the issue of if it snaps and we can't replace the chassis, we've got a dormant vehicle. So guys, we bought ourselves the Mojave V2 BLX uh, 6S. So for you guys, I'm going to unbox this uh, and let's see what this is all about. So this is the first time we're physically opening this box and having a look at it. I have taken the tape off just the outer casing just to make life a bit easier. Uh, let's get into this. So with all armor vehicles, they come double boxed. So you've got a gift pack boxing just there. And you've got the outer box. Um, I'll open this up. Well, it's coming up into halves. So I'll leave the bottom base in there. I'm not gonna bother pulling that out because I'm just gonna end up throwing it on the floor anyway. Uh, but that's the vehicle. Let's get the vehicle out of it. Check that little beast out. That looks awesome. Right, um, first thing first, let's go through what comes with this particular vehicle. And then we'll get this open. So I'm excited to do this first. Let's see what it comes with. So I know there's two different variants of controllers that normally come with these. And I believe this should be the latest version. However, it ain't gonna be the greatest controller, which I've read upon, which is a bit disappointing. You'd expect them for a DX3 Spectrum um, with something of this sort of price, but they don't. Um, they've upgraded it to an SLT3 uh, rather than the SLT2. Uh, you may have seen this with um, some of our other vehicles. Um, I believe the Typhoon, that comes with it. So you've got your A and B buttons just there. You've got on here um, your steering adjustments, your throttle adjustments, and your on and off buttons, throttle reverse, steering reverse, and your limitations on your throttle are there. So you've got 50, 75, and 100. 
So that's if you want to restrict the power, if you're letting a little one use it, etc. It's not a bad controller, um, to be fair. It's got a nice foam grip. The spring rate's quite nice. Um, I won't say it's a bad controller. I won't say it's the worst, but it's definitely not the best. But that's something they could have improved on, especially for the price. So, you get a bag of goodies. And in this bag of goodies, I'll go through what comes in here. <coughs> so you get your little tool kit. So you get a couple of wrenches in there. Um, so you get a big cross wrench, you get a small cross wrench. You'll get a fair few Allen keys of all sorted sizes. Unfortunately with this one, you don't get that lovely um, wheel nut remover like we did with the Outcast. Um, instead they give you a couple of these crosses. Speed pinning gear. So that's something we're gonna try. What do you reckon on? That's gonna be interesting, especially seeing what a high speed pinning gear can do when we fit it to the FSR. So I'll be really interested for that. Guys, once again, Umman's behind the camera. He's always shy, never comes on camera. Whilst we're trying to do unboxing videos, his, his excuse always is he's never dressed for the occasion. <laughs> I'm sure he is. <laughs> One of these days I'm gonna come on camera and a tuxedo. <laughs> Say you're ready. Yeah, then I'll be ready. <laughs> right guys, also it comes with some pistons for your uh, suspension, so for the shocks itself. It comes with some additional washers here. So washers or spacers, whichever way you want to call them, or shims, should I say. And they are for your diff, to space your diff out. I have heard about these, um, but yeah, you get them. You get some decals, some armor decals, some 6S decals there. And then you get a card. So this card, it just tells you about your maximum performance, etc. Um, it comes in two different languages. Uh, it basically tells you the difference on 4S and 6S um, and so forth. And it tells you your gearing. So it says you can obtain with standard gearing 50 mile an hour. And with um, the speed gear, you should be obtaining 60 mile an hour. And uh, it does say in optimum conditions. And in terms of battery, the vehicle requires either a 2S or a 3S battery times two. So two 2Ss or two 3Ss. Um, and that information is on the back and the front. Just ones in kilometers. So maximum kilometer speed is 95 kilometers an hour with the high speed pinning gear. With the low speed pinning gear, you should be getting 80 kilometers an hour in optimum conditions. That's going to be exciting, if it does that. <laughs> <laughs> big claims. Yeah, these manufacturers do put big claims in, guys. Um, so here we've got the manual. The manual seems like it's a universal manual up against four different vehicles. So as you can see there, it's for the Mojave success, uh, the Notorious success, Typhon success, and the Creighton success. So I'm guessing the chassis are all pretty similar or the same on them. Uh, so this is the instruction manual. It's quite detailed to be fair. You've got exploded pictures of a quick start guide, how to start the vehicle as in connect the batteries, etc. That's pretty much self-explanatory. It'll go through and tell you how to bind the controller, what the switches on the controller do and so forth. And then there's, see if there's a parts page. Oh, there is. So you've got a parts page for all these vehicles, the Mojave, Typhon, Notorious, and um, the Creighton. And it's got exploded diagrams with part numbers, which is really, really handy. And yeah, just flicking through it, 
it gives you all the information about the motors, the diffs. If you guys can see that there, I will try and get that zoomed in for you. And yeah, other than that, it's pretty much basic manual. It's got everything you need on there. Um, you've got some warranty information there, some jargon that you're probably not even gonna look at, but it's there. Now let's get into what we've been waiting to see, eh? the actual car itself. A lot of you might have already seen this, um, which is fine. I know it's an old platform. It's been out for a few years, um, probably about two years now, <clears throat> but it's trending still really well. And fortunately for us, it just made sense to go for something that we know is good and not just for views. So don't get me wrong, if we just wanted to get YouTube views, etc., the right move would have been is to get the 4S because it's a brand new vehicle. Everyone's ranting and raving about it. Um, it would have got loads of views, etc., and so forth. But we didn't, it, it wasn't about us being fake. We wanted to buy something that we knew um, is going to last, something what we can replace parts with, and something we can continue giving you guys content with. So we need to be true to ourselves and true to you guys. Um, hence, we went for the Mojave 6S. Any input on that, Oman? No, I think that a lot of people will be shocked that we went for the not newest model, but. You don't, you don't necessarily have to buy the newest to get what you want out of an RC. So I think that's one thing to remember if you are getting into the hobby. That don't just look at stuff that's been released in the past month or what the hype on YouTube is. Actually have a think about what you want your new piece of kit to do. What type of terrain you're going to be on. What your ability is like when using the car. And um, just what you want out of it really. Yeah, definitely agree, man. Uh, you need to be buying something that's suitable for you and the terrain that you're going to be using it on. Otherwise, what will end up happening is you'll do your couple of runs with it and it'll just sit on a shelf. And for us, anything that we purchase, it's not sponsored. We pay for it ourselves and we didn't want to invest money into a truck that's not going to get used and it's just going to sit on the shelf. We wanted to invest money into a truck that we can actually record content with for you guys as well as have some fun and when you've got a selection of so many rcs as you can see the the list goes on the wall goes all the way that way we've got some more around here there's some more around the back there's some more under here we've got loads of boxes that ain't been unboxed yet um when you've got this many rcs it's hard to basically use all of them so unless they're all exciting so if you have a particular rc that's very boring or doesn't do the job as well as the others, it's just gonna end up sitting there. So, hence we didn't go for the 4S guys. So let's get this unraveled. That's a really nice finish on that. Yeah, I like the matte to sort of gloss, gloss the finish, yeah. It is proper gloss, so guys on here, the photos don't do these justice. Um, one minute it's matte and then you've got the lime green stripes which are basically gloss as you can see um, they look really really well there are two color options available in this you can get the one that's basically black red and blue um, or you can get this particular one we bought this particular one just because it's, stri it's striking it stands out and I think it'll look good on camera. So, um, Omen, you want to get the camera in and we can start taking this all apart? Yeah. I'd quite like to see Armour start releasing stuff in like mad colours, like hot pink and silver. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I think the only silver car they did was the Infraction when they released the Infraction. That was really cool. But I think they start need to, they really need to start releasing some super colours like electric blues and crazy pinks, um, vibrant oranges. Um, for example, like Traxxas, if you have a look at the XRT range, the XRT comes in some phenomenal colors. The blue and black, the orange and black, lime green and black, the red and black. 
So many different combinations. And I think Armour need to step their game up on their colour scheme. Don't get me wrong, not the scheme itself, but the colours. They need to be more vibrant like this, but more of options. So not just this is your vibrant option and that's your dull option. They need to give more of a variety. I think that would be really cool. Yep. Right, bring the camera in and let's see what this is about. Right, guys, I've taken all the packaging off, etc. Um, I've not taken the pins off just yet. Um, just looking at the vehicle and the capabilities of it, this should be awesome on all sorts of terrain. Um, just check out the suspension travel on this. So all the wheels are on the floor and look how high that side goes. That's pretty impressive. So that shows to me that this should grip on all levels. Um, whether it's bumpy surfaces, sand, etc. Well, it is a desert truck. Um, it should grip like, like there's no tomorrow, no matter how rough the terrain is. Oh, this is their metal gears. It's got a cool driver in there. So you've got Omen and Ammo sitting in there. Ready for some action. Leave us some butthead. <laughs> Over the front, what's really cool is this rubber lip here. Um, just before you hit the skid plate underneath, you've got this really nice rubber, rubber, rubber plate. Uh, I'm guessing that runs at the back of the shell as a bumper or some sort of protection. Yep. Um, don't get me wrong, guys, you probably know I've seen loads of videos on these. Uh, but yeah, it's running the e-boot tyres. Um, as with, like, obviously, all armour vehicles, they got they all run e-boots. Um, so it's got e-boot tyres on it. The wheels are quite small. I thought that. You know, for the size. For the size of the vehicle, the wheels look tiny. Just to give you an idea... I've got an MJX wheel and tyre and you can put that wheel and tyre in the centre. It almost is demonstrating for you guys just there uh, on the size. The wheels are absolutely tiny, um, which is a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a hit and miss, don't you reckon? I don't know. What's your thoughts on I want to give Armour the benefit of the doubt and say it's deliberate at this point before we've run it. Yeah, there may be a solid good reason for it um, that they've done it like this. It may be the case of running small wheels gives you that better acceleration, gives you thicker tyre walls and it allows more tr uh, suspension travel. In terms of the gap underneath the vehicle, there's a lot of clearance here. Uh, as you can see, look, that's me pushing the car up. Uh, but with its sag, there's still a lot of clearance, which is one thing I think is pretty cool, to be fair. Um, yeah, it's got the... I think it's got sway bars on it as well, hasn't it? This has. It's got built-in sway bars, etc. You've got your um, skid plates across the top. Um, I don't really see them helping in any shape or form when you're bashing and you jump. But this vehicle ain't intended to do backflips. Though it probably will do backflips, etc. This is a short course truck. Um, you've seen what happens when you take a short course truck or a vehicle that's not intended for bashing and you bash it, you break it or bend it in half. Um, so yeah, this is, I'm guessing if it rolls on its roof, etc. it skids across. Uh, but it's a nice neat touch. I love the roll cage in here. Um, let's get this opened. So typical armor fashion, the clips come with your tags, your retainer tags, which are rubber, and they're held on onto the shell, just so you don't lose your clips, especially if you're running this sort of truck um, on conditions like a beach, on the sand, etc. Um, I don't think you'll have a chance in hell in finding them. Nice and easy, straightforward. I believe they do have Velcro. So this does have Velcro on the side. I'm not a big fan of the Velcro, but it's neither here or there. It's better than nothing. 
inside the shell itself, you've got your um, your interior or your men, etc., whatever you want to call it. There, they're inside, built in with the roll cage. The roll cage is actually a working roll cage. So, as you've seen on the other side, the roll cage itself goes all the way around the roof into construction around basically the cockpit. And now underneath the roll cage has a foam pad which sits on top of this centre diff mount. So that basically prevents when, when the car flips over upside down, that roll cage actually works, I guess. And this secures so that the shell doesn't get crushed, which is a neat touch. Right, let's put this to a side. And have a look at this. Wow, that looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a nice piece of kit. So you've got your aluminium horn on the servo. It's got a Spectrum S652 servo in there. You've got your Spectrum uh, Fermat motor, brushless motor, which is a 2050 kV motor. That's there. It has got a heat sink. So on the revised edition, the older ones, they didn't have this heat sink. So on this particular one, it's got a heat sink. However, we have ordered some upgrades for this, uh, which we will show you um, in the running video because we'll put them on before we run it. However, one thing I will tell you guys is it doesn't come with a motor fan, which is very bizarre. Don't get me wrong. Some people say you don't need it, but then if... From the version 1, they had to put a heat sink on for the version 2. That should give you some indication that this is getting warm. So if they've done that, and they've drilled holes out and tapped them for a fan, they could have put a fan in. So what I've done is I've actually ordered the genuine armour fan for this, um, which will go on in this place. It, I think it's a must. Uh, for others, it's entirely up to you, but I think it's a must. If it's got it there... And the version 1 didn't have it. And this improved the version 2. I think the fans are moss. So it's got that there. Um, also, if you have a look, you've got all your pillar balls. Which are really neat. You've got your centre bracing. That goes across. You got all your EXB parts, as you can see, there is a few bits here. Just there. You've got a metal chassis. Your plastic guards on the side. Running at IC5 connectors, as you guys are aware, with intelligent wiring. You guys probably already know the specifications on all of this. You have a Spectrofermo 150 amp ESC. So all the parts on this are quality, guys. It's not a, it's not a cheap piece of kit. The only thing that I think so far lets it down is the controller. But that's neither here or there. You have got sway bars as well. Just there. Running around the back, you can see them. Center diff, prop shafts, so prop shafts are two sections. Adjustable oil field dampers. And look at this for, for it articulating guys. With all four wheels, or oh, sorry, all three wheels on the ground. If that don't show, it can take some terrains. I don't know what will. I like this touch at the front as well. So this bash 
bar bumper sits behind the body shell so it gives it some extra reinforcement and then you've got your rubber piece that's the lip that sits just underneath the shell and that's the only bit that's visible which is quite cool and on the rear you've just got yourself your rear bumper And then you've got a tray where you can put your luggage in. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, what's your thoughts on it? I think it's a really well made piece of kit. Um, I mean, even though you would expect it for price, but it's nice to have that feeling that you've really got your money's worth when you do spend this type of money on a uh, RC. Um, like Amo said, components are brilliant, um, really well put together, really solid as well. Like, very solid. There is a bit of flex in that plastic, which is good. Um, but even these points here, they're very, very, they're the body mounts. Yeah, there's some movement, but they're rigid. But at the same time, you know, these bits are going to take a bit of a bashing yeah so i will say though the the battery configuration because we're going to run it on two batteries you're going to have to stack them um there ain't a place to put a battery left and right to even the weight out you've got to stack them so providing your batteries don't overweigh the motor and esc your distribution should be okay weight, weight distribution um in terms of battery on this particular car i'll talk to you guys in a second about what we're going to actually run um, these are metal. They are. As you guys can see, obviously the turn buckles are all adjustable. Um, so it's adjustable track rod there. Um, but these bits here are all metal. As you can see, anything that's red, it's metal. And then you've got your pillar balls there and there. So that piece there, that red piece, it's all metal. It goes all the way around. Which is quite neat to be fair. Like I said, there are some upgrades that we have purchased for this, but you'll see them in the next video, which is the running video of this, and we'll install them and before we take it for a run. Will that not be a problem? No, a lot of RCs um, have the, the center gear on display there um it can be an issue obviously if a stone gets in there and cuts it there will be an issue but the chances of that happening are very slim to be fair i've seen loads of rcs like that but yeah it's um like i said it's a metal chassis of this oh yeah the pillar balls Impressive. Right, in terms of battery, guys, I'll tell you what batteries are running on this. So, like most of our models, don't get me wrong, we've got loads of batteries, um, and I can just use batteries that I've already got. But me being me, I like to get a new set of batteries every time we buy a vehicle. Um, the simple reason being that if we do decide that we're going away somewhere and we're going to take all the RCs, we can charge all the batteries up and we can take X amount of RCs and not have no issues and we can run every single RC. So it's, it's not a bad thing having loads of batteries, I guess. It's expensive, but that's about it. So what we're running on this particular car is some Gen Ace batteries, the bashing series. So these are three S's. So we're running two free S's in series circuit. Um, these are 100 C rated. So decent batteries to be fair. Um, we have bought these in the past. And the free S we have ran on, I believe, the Typhon. We've done the run on the Typhon with the three S. Lasted for ages on that. Yeah.
There you go. You guys have probably seen these anyway already. So they're 8,000 millivolts, sorry, 8,000 milliamps, and they're 100 C. And this is the pro range. So we'll be running two of these um, in series. Obviously they'll pop into position. Um, they need charging, etc. They're brand new, just open them in front of you guys. Uh, but yeah, we'll be running two of these. So there you have it guys, the Mojave 6S by armor and as you can see um, a lot of you've already seen this platform a lot of you have seen this truck you know why we've gone for it this thing looks awesome from the videos we've seen it performs awesome and we're just really really um, eager to get this out and see what it can actually do uh, really really chuffed on this particular purchase now it would have been nice to get the 4s However, like I said, the 4S is just hyped up with the raving about a new vehicle. In terms of cars themselves, you put them side by side, hands down, I think pretty much everybody will go for the 6S if they were both released at the same time. It's because the 4S is a brand new vehicle. The hype's gone that way. Uh, we're staying true to ourselves and true to you guys, hence we went for the 6S power. Guys, if you like our content, please, 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 like, share and subscribe and don't forget to smash that notification button to see the running content and our future videos uh, all together with us. Um, also guys, this particular car, like I said, before we run it on the next video, we're going to do some upgrades. We'll see you then.